We're here at the 19th yard site of Rab Shlomo Kalibach in Harham Luchot, as you can see from the background. We're very close to the grave. And with us is Rabbi Dr. Joshua Ritchie, who goes way back to 1964 that you first met Rab Shlomo. Yeah, and I was being a modern Orthodox observer. But to meet Shlomo was such an unbelievable experience. To meet a Jew who really loved and lived Judaism and loved every Jew and brought every Jew closer to God and to each other. It was a very transforming experience to see somebody who embraced you with such love that you felt the response that your heart opens up and you love everybody. Uh -huh. Like he was loving everybody. He, he embraced every Jew. He, he reached out to every human being in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for almost 30 years you were very close to Rav Shlomo and you hosted him in your home in, uh, where, in Los Angeles? Um, we hosted him wherever we were. We lived for many years in Los Angeles and when we lived there we had a wonderful, beautiful home at 613 North Las Palmas. Wow, how would you choose the number? It did get chosen for us obviously. Uh -huh. And it was waiting for us, a beautiful home, 613. Was, it was. And so you must have hosted Rav Shlomo many times. Yeah. We were there for actually something like 15 years. Uh -huh. And so Shlomo, this was kind of the center of Rav Shlomo in Los Shlomo Angeles came to area. LA, or the, uh -huh. well, whenever Shlomo came to LA, we had the honor of that being his home. Mm -hmm. And uh, our youngest son, Ziv, who now is the author of all these books of Shlomo right, and, and works so hard. here at the yard site. The Ziv whole turned over his bedroom to oh, Shlomo, wow. and that was Shlomo's room. Uh -huh. And uh, so that that was Shlomo's room whenever he was in LA. And he would, often he'd only stay a day or two or three, and often he would stay a week or two on occasion. And when he came for these extended periods of time, he would teach in your home, uh, as well as leading singing. What, what else would they do? Uh, he I know there are many recordings of the yeah. teachings. Well, we had, thank God, many evenings in our home. He gave many concerts in the area, and then often after the concert, he'd come back and have a teaching till 2, 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, on occasion, we made events, and uh, on occasion, we actually made a Shabbaton. We had one beautiful Shabbaton in Shlom. We had maybe when was this 70 possible? people. What year of That would have been, we were there from 78 to about 93. Uh -huh. So it was in that period. It would have been in the late 80s. So you were, from 78 to 93, you were really the main base of Rabbi Shlomo in, in the Los in Angeles Los area. Yeah. He would come three, four, five, six times a year. Uh -huh. yeah. And you saw many Balei Tshuva come through this uh, area? And That's uh, what uh, we hear. That's People come up to us all the time and say, uh, you know, I first met Shlomo, I first... Uh, you know, was touched and started the path and became uh, through your home. Now you received smicha from Rab Shlomo. Yeah. Would you tell us about this uh, smicha? What was the ceremony? What was the meaning of the smicha? Uh, Shlomo was looking to give smicha to a few people that he felt you know, would carry on his message and be his type of uh, musmachim. Uh -huh. um, as far as that, well, well, it starts out with, you know, a rav he should be called, you know, so he's telling me I have to call myself rabbi, so, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, and a teacher, and uh, he went through a list of things that uh, he felt I should be doing, which I try to review every now and then and realize I'm not doing, but... Uh, striving to... Like what, for example, did you think you should be doing? Building, uplifting people, drawing people close, uh -huh. teaching, inspiring, uh, counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, uh, but you've established a whole counseling center. It's true. So you've certainly built up a uh, legacy that continues with Shlomo's path. I try. Yeah, mm -hmm. I and my wife uh, do. And, uh, we feel what we are teaching is, you know, I've learned, I think the approach that I learned is really a Shlomo approach, and I was privileged also after getting to be no Shlomo, I came to settle in Jerusalem, 
What year did you come in Aliyah? That was in 68. Uh -huh. Oh, in 68 you came, but then we, you went back to Los Angeles. We also were back and forth. Right? Uh -huh. We came up to Israel um, Right after the Six Day times. War. But one of the times we came in 68 and we were here till uh, 71, for uh -huh. three years. I was teaching for medical school at Hadassah uh -huh. and Karen. And in those years, that was that was very special. And there you also hosted Rabbi Shlomo in, when you in were here. In we used to have... In Bayat Vagan. Then you became close to the Amshan of uh, Rabbi, Rabbi yeah. at that time when you were in Bayat Vagan. So you also have a, another unique connection there with Rabbi Shlomo and the Amshan of uh, Rabbi. I think that the two of you, three of you actually, became very close and that this played an important role in establishing Moshav Moor Modi'in. Yeah. Can you tell us about how this was, I guess, in 1976 or so, right? right? That uh, through your uh, efforts, the uh, Admor Vamshinov was able to enable Pai to Pai Agudat Israel to uh, establish the Moshav for Shlomo's Hasidim. Can you yeah. tell us what happened? You said it very nicely. <laughs> well. the, uh, there was a beautiful Amshinov Chasid by the name of Eliyahu. Uh, Kitov, his name was really Avram Mikotovsky. Uh -huh. The famous Eliyahu Kitov from Sefer Toda'a. Was a. Shubeto. They were. They learned in the same cheder in uh, Amshnav and Akvatsk. They were. They were raised together. Actually, the Amshnav I think was a few years older, about three or four or five years older. But they were in that same little cheder 